what up y'all it's your boy jkg we are back playing some diablo 4 uh for you guys this one is just going to be a quick little overview on my first nightmare dungeon experience i am a very very solo player uh in this game don't really hop into chats don't really hop into parties much but i do like to play and i like playing solo that's just kind of the way i am uh it might be slower it might be much more of a slog in the long run but it's what I enjoy. Uh, this was the first chance I've gotten uh, since last weekend to really grind. And I was able to do my first Nightmare Dungeon today. I have that recorded. We'll, we'll ping that up here for you guys. And we'll try to play it at a really quick speed. We'll kind of jump through it as well. Just because it does take a little bit of time because I am hyper solo. <laughs> if you are a very solo person, you might not want to jump into the Nightmare Dungeons until you're able to uh, really, really run around in the world tier that it states. Um without dying um because you know if we look at these nightmare sigils where to where do you find them you're going to see them in your consumables tab with like all of your potions uh they're going to look a little different because your potions are going to look like little vases and these nightmare sigils are going to just they, they all look a little different right but this one in particular you can see requires world tier three and it is going to be part of it is going to affect the Gulron slums uh, the Gulran Slums dungeon in the Dry Steps region. And you can see, revives allowed 12. We only get 12 revives, so if you are very much a solo player and you're having, if you are having trouble just running around the world for the World Tier 3, don't recommend doing this solo. Get in a group and farm them up. Also, you get to share that XP, you get to share the loot. That way, everybody's kind of getting the loot and stuff like that. Because this is Nightmare Dungeons, they are a really good spot to get loot uh, and glyphs and stuff like that. So, you, at the end, you can actually get glyphs to, to rank up and, and stuff like that. But you can kind of see uh, this one has dungeon, they all have dungeon, different dungeon affixes. So, this one in particular, if we were going to run this one, we would have increased healing by 10% on ourselves. Uh, the elites are always going to be cold enchanted, and the monsters are all going to attack 20% faster based on this particular nightmare, sig nightmare sigil. You can see this one is a tier 4 sigil. In my stash, I think I have one that's like up to 17. I haven't re really been paying much attention to them, to be completely honest, because through the week, I do have a day job and it takes up a ton of my time. Um, let's go ahead and get this off of the screen and we'll have it right here. We have it queued up for that. I'm going to go ahead and hop through it real quick, but you can kind of see that's the process. You go ahead and you treat it just like a potion. You click on it. You want to use it. You say you confirm that you're going to use it. And then at that point, if you haven't already had a potion ready to go, go ahead and queue up a potion for yourself. And that way you can get that additional XP, depending on where you're going to be. Like if, if we were going to be using that sigil from before, where it said all the monsters, uh, all the elites are going to have, um, the cold affix, uh, aspect to them you might want to use one of the, your potions that's going to give you additional uh, cold resistance uh, on top of your xp you know just kind of think about it like that right if if it's going to be if it says all monsters are going to have poisons you know maybe bring in you know chug a, po a, a poison uh, elixir you know that way you're going to have that poison resistance just kind of you know thinking of it like that but you can kind of see Based on my build, I don't have an optimized whirlwind build yet. I haven't been able to farm all the legendaries that are going to really unlock it, farm all the, you know, the sub stats and everything like that. I have kind of a, I would say probably one third of the way there um, as far as the, the uh, aspects and the stats and everything like that to unlock it, at least for world tier three. Um, and the same thing with my other build, the hammer of the ancients. I don't have all the aspects I, I have like partial builds both ways so at, at this point i'm just kind of like the whirlwind is giving me more uh consistent times it's a little bit quicker hammer of the ancients i think i do a little bit more more burst damage with that so you kind of flip a coin uh as to which one you want to run there but uh obviously you know if you have a different build like if you're running necro if you're running you know rogue there are some massively 
massively wonderful builds that can get you through a lot of stuff. Uh, Druid has the Pulverize build. Rogue has the Twisting Blades build. Uh, Necromancer has the uh, the Bone Spear, you know, and uh, Poisons. Poisons are really OP in the game uh, for progression and dungeon clearing and stuff like that. You can really clear mobs really quick with Poison damage. Um, Sorcerer has some ice shard builds that are really really sick for some times uh, For you guys there. Well, we're gonna jump through you kind of see the 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 gist of it here But we're, we're just gonna jump through it is a long process, especially as a hyper solo under geared bar, right? <laughs> I am under geared, so I'm not going to be doing, you know, OP damage. I am hyper solo, so I don't have somebody else running to go across the other side of the map to clear clear different lanes and stuff like that. So the times are going to be longer. That's just something that you if you are a solo player, you're just you're taking that on the chin, right? You're you're going to be you know you're going to have to do a lot of backtracking. You know you're going to have to clear multiple lanes by yourself and it's going to be a little bit of a pain in the backside, but uh, let's hop forward to the boss fight. Hopefully we can hop forward to the boss fight here. And you kind of see the the boss fight here. I had to portal back to town to <laughs> I actually had to portal back to town to to offload some gear so I could pick up you know some some other gear i'm in a mode of trying to pick up as much as i can right now that way i can sell it for uh that way i can sell that gear for you know gold and and other things like that or potentially even go as far as to salvage you know some legendary pieces to try to get some uh, if i've already extracted the the aspect and it's not an upgrade you know i can salvage it get those materials and everything like that but you can see right here uh, when you beat the nightmare dungeon, you get this, you get this little pop up here, and that is going to be where you can go in and actually uh, update your glyphs and stuff like that. So if we look here, you know, as we come in here, let me move myself off to the other side of the screen here. Uh, you can see where when we interact with this, we can see which ones we want to to uh, mess around with. And that's pretty much the end of the Nightmare Dungeon. Once you get that done, you don't know, once you start getting your Paragon Points and everything like that, as you're running your Paragon Points, those glyphs come in really handy. And they can, you know, help out a lot. And then this is just, you know, the the gameplay footage on a loop. So don't even worry about that. But hope this guy helps you guys, you know, if you, especially if you're new. If this is geared, this particular is geared more towards a new player. If you haven't done a Nightmare Dungeon yet, what's the experience like? This is the experience. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you guys do enjoy it, as always, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button so you know when I upload in the future. I will see you in the next Diablo 4 adventure. Peace.